Today, I'm going to a Big Time Rush concert. I'm literally excited. Oh my gosh, I have been a Big Time Rush fan literally since like 2009, 2010. I think the show started in 2009, but when I was in like first grade, maybe kindergarten, I was a huge, and still am a huge, huge fan of the Nickelodeon show, Big Time Rush. Now, what's really cool with Big Time Rush, Big Time Rush is a Nickelodeon TV show that aired like late 2000s to early 2010s. So yeah, basically it was this Nickelodeon sitcom focused around these four teenage boys who they become a boy band. It is one of Nickelodeon's best shows in my opinion. Um, honestly, it's probably my favorite Nickelodeon show. It's so fun, it's so good. Interesting too, I mean, I think that was something that I really liked with the show, um, as well as it being funny, was that it was about being in the music industry, writing the songs, recording them, fans, you know, publicity. You get to follow their journey and you get to experience the madness with them. But yeah, so, it's a really, really good show. It's so funny. It's kind of like slapstick, not like entirely slapstick humor, but there's definitely like a lot of physical Three Stooges type humor. It was created by Scott Fellows, who he also created two other shows that I really, really love. The first one is Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide, which is also such an amazing show. Oh my gosh. That was earlier than Big Time Rush. That was, I think like early, early 2000s, like 2003 or, you know, 2005, somewhere around there. I followed Ned, Moe's, and Cookie and just had, you know, it was a sitcom about these three middle schoolers and just middle school adventures and drama and, you know, how to survive middle school. But yeah, what I love with Scott Fellow's shows are that they're so funny, but they also have a heart to them. They also have a message and there's always, yeah, some kind of moral or lesson taught at the end of the show. And I love those shows so, so much. And I feel like Scott Fellow's shows are one of the most perfect examples of those type of shows. But yeah, it's kind of similar to, you know, like Abbott Elementary, where it is really, really funny, but it also has a moral and a lesson at the end of the day. But yeah, Ned's Declassified was one of those shows. The other one was 100 Things to Do Before High School. That only had one season and it was pretty good. You know, it reminded me of Ned's Declassified because that show also followed middle schoolers and just hijinks and all that stuff. But I would say that that was the weakest of his three shows, but it was still pretty good. And I wish that it did get renewed. But yeah, um, one of the reasons that I really like Scott Fellow's shows specifically is because of the sound effects. He has this sound effects person or just like a library of sound effects that are always used in his shows or these three shows. And they're so funny. And some people think that they're like ridiculous and crazy. And I mean, they kind of are, but I absolutely love them. And I could always tell, you know, that, like, I think what's cool with the shows is that they all have a similar style. And part of that style is the sound effects. And it's awesome. Using the sound effects, actually, they don't use a laugh track. So that's something that is also interesting because a lot of people hate laugh tracks. And a lot of shows rely on laugh tracks to be seen as funnier than they actually are. But Big Time Rush and all of Scott Fellow's shows were shows that did not rely on laugh tracks and were genuinely funny. But yeah, I just love the sound effects so much. They're absolutely iconic. So I loved that show, first grade, second grade, you know, whatever age I was when it was airing. Um, it was so funny, so interesting. I mean, I wanted to be a pop star myself, so I was taking my notes. But yeah, I mean, I just, you know, it was really enamored with like am I and recording music and like being famous and all this stuff and then in addition to the show they yeah were a real life band they made music in the show um but they also were a real life band that you know had the same music and they would have concerts and stuff but I was really really young and I didn't even know like what a concert was to be honest I mean I was watching the show but I didn't really I didn't realize that they actually were a real band I think when I was that age like I I just kind of thought they were a show. So basically, long story, I never got to go to a Big Time Rush concert when they were touring and together. So when I heard that they were getting back together and going on tour again, I was like, I have to go because this is my childhood. I love their music. Oh, that's like another thing I feel like I've barely talked about in this video. I love pretty much most of their music. I mean, especially the OG songs, like, oh my goodness. Such bobs, 
so good, so fun. I mean, also what's kind of cool is like, there's some songs that were, you know, really significant in the show and they have the music video at the end of the episode. And, you know, so some songs just like take me back, give me that nostalgia of the show or, you know, what was happening in the show. You know, like for example, like Till I Forget About You with Joe and Kendall's breakup. I mean, that was absolutely iconic and just, a cultural reset if you will but yeah so i really really like their songs i have a playlist of like my favorite ones of them and has quite a few songs yeah i don't know they're just so fun they're just so fun so good and just not like i mean some of them are cheesy for sure but they're not bad like they're good you know they're actually good so yeah i was like in a mixture of absolutely loving the show and just standing big time raj like since i was literally in first grade and actually liking their music um, independently of the show and just like, you know, their actual real music. But yeah, I mean, I just was like, oh my gosh, like I absolutely love Big Time Rush, love the show, nostalgia, love the music. I have to go to one of the concerts. So I told my parents, you know, parents, it's your birthday. Usually they give you kind of like some type of birthday present, you know, and I usually, me being high maintenance, I usually have like a list, you know, or just, I usually have like a ton of ideas, like what I want. I don't expect that I get I will get the list, you know, but it's just kind of like usually around my birthday I kind of do think of things that I want. It's kind of like a Christmas wish list, like stuff that I might even buy for myself. That's it, you know, so they were asking me, oh, you know, what do I want? And I couldn't really think of much this year, actually. Yeah, I don't know. I think consumerism and capitalism just didn't have such a chokehold on me at that point. So I really kind of was like, oh, no, I kind of have everything that I need and want or you know, like, I, yeah, I kind of have everything. Like, there's nothing I really, really want. Because that's the thing. I think, you know, when I'm coming up with these lists or thinking of things that I want, I am very intentional. And, like, like I don't want to just put something on there just because I'm like, oh, that looks cool. They're like, oh, that's cute. Like, I usually, you know, with this kind of list, I really want to like um, <laughs> what I'm putting on there. Or, like, I really want to want what I'm putting on there. So, yeah, I told my parents that... I would love to go to a Big Time Rush concert. And they were like, okay. And I was like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I kind of just like said that, but I didn't like actually think they were going to get me tickets. So I was like, oh, like, that'd be kind of cool. But then they did. And I was so grateful, so thankful. And yeah, so today's the day. I'm really excited. I'm just going to put a little more news on this side. But yeah, I'm really excited. It's going to be really fun. I'm going with one of my friends and it's gonna be really cool. Another thing I want to say too is like, I really am not like a huge concert person. Um, like I have to really like you to spend money to go to your concert. You know what I'm saying? Because like, if I don't like you that much, I literally could just listen to your music by myself with my headphones. I have to like your music and I have to like you. If I like your music, but I don't really like you, mm, mm, you know what I'm saying? Like, no. I think I was mentioning that just because I've only been to a couple of concerts in my life. The concerts that I've been to are Jingle Ball. Jingle Ball is awesome because that is basically like going to like 10 concerts in one because you get so many artists and they sing pretty much like their best songs. I just love Jingle Ball. I think it's such a good deal. And then also, yeah, I've been to Jingle Ball twice. And the Jingle Balls that I've had the privilege to go to, like, oh my gosh, they've had such good artists. Like I've seen Sabrina Carpenter, which I, I do like her music. She has some really good music, but I also really, really like her because she was in Girl Men's World. And I was such a big Girl Men's World fan back in the day. Seeing the Five Seconds of Summer, oh my gosh, they were fun. Max, oh my gosh. Max is awesome. Max, he was my favorite performer I've ever seen. Like he had so much fun on stage. He like almost inspired me to like, do music production because I was like, oh my gosh, he's having so much fun on stage. It looks awesome. Um, and then he's also iconic because he's in Rags with Katie Palmer, which is such a good movie. And yeah, he had some Nickelodeon roles. Seen Charlie Puth. I love Charlie Puth so much. He has such good songs and he's like funny and weird and just so awesome. That is pretty much the end of this video. I didn't film a proper outro to this, so that's what this is right now. But also I did vlog the concert, so I'm going to be posting that video really soon. So stay tuned for that and I will see you guys in my next video.